What's up guys, Dotto here. Welcome back for another build episode here on my channel. This is a Triumph Bonneville Scrambler build and uh, today we're gonna try to get this puppy fired up. But before we do, there's a couple things I gotta do. Sit back, relax, grab a drink and enjoy. On the agenda for today, we have to get the oil up to the proper level. It's overfilled with oil currently from the previous owner. I have to disassemble the oil cooler lines and, and also get the oil cooler out of here. I have to see if I can actually do that without removing one of the headers. The fuel tank is in pretty rough condition, but I'm very confident that if I fill it with fuel, we can at least try to get it running. Typically, I don't do that, especially if the fuel tank looks like the way it does, but I'm super excited and I have to rip apart these carbs anyway. As I mentioned in a previous video, I sourced out a replacement uh, oil cooler, it is used, but it's in great condition. This came off of a 2013, and I do believe that they made some improvements. I ended up uh, blocking off the ports and cleaning this unit, and it looks damn good for being used. So I did verify that uh, this part will fit on this unit. So once I get the oil drained down to the proper level, we're gonna tackle the replacement here and uh, fill her up with some gas and hope for the best. When I bought this bike, the battery was completely dead and I did charge it up. However, I think that um, I should probably throw it on the charger while I'm doing all this other work because when we are ready to crank it over, I wanna make sure the battery is good to go. Uh, what I like to use as far as a charger is this Noco Genius 10. Uh, this will charge any 12 or 6 volt battery. It also does AGM and lithium and it does battery 12 volt battery repair and 12 volt battery supply. So it'll throw 12 volts at any unit you want to test, which is really convenient and it does regular and uh, AGM 6 volt batteries. Very, very nice unit. I've repaired a few batteries using this and then they work phenomenal. I'm not sponsored or anything, I just love their products. Noco, you guys are awesome. So the battery is a little rough, so we're gonna let that charge up. And next up on the list is drain that oil until we get it uh, to perfect level. All right, so there's the oil level. It's technically right where it should be on that upper mark there. I drained four quarts of oil out of this bike to get it to proper level, which means that it was overfilled by four quarts. What? The hell, that's bad. Four extra quarts, that really worries me now because I have to crack these cases and replace these seals and I'm hoping there's no other uh, issues inside the engine as far as uh, the oil issue goes. Maybe that's why um, the oil pressure was so high and he was messing with the oil cooler, but regardless, we're here now, extra four quarts of oil, that's insane. Literally have never seen that ever happen to me working on any motorcycles in the last who knows how many years. I'd also like to mention, please get a service manual. If you're going to be working on your own motorcycles, please get a service manual. It'll tell you essentially what to do every step of the way and what tools you need to do things like the oil change. This oil reeks of fuel, which leads me to believe that um, if it wasn't running correctly after the oil change, he may have messed with the carbs. He also told me that the carbs may need rebuilt. Um, it's probably running super rich. So now I'm actually curious if this thing will even start and run. And if it does, I hope it doesn't leak any oil. If it does, we'll address it. Uh, next up on the list, I'm gonna get rid of this used oil and then we're gonna start disassembling this oil cooler and see how far we get. Next on the agenda is get this cooler out. I did check on the battery and it shows green, so we're good to go at least there. I mean, it's still popping off a little bit. These are designed so you can put a wrench on this part, which does not spin. This is welded. Um, and then you put the uh, socket on this banjo bolt. I already broke it loose, as you can tell. Then you take the assembly apart. I think what the gentleman was doing, he was either cranking on this or he was trying to crank on this top piece and then everything twisted and cracked right here. You can see um, the, how it's bent and broken actually right there at the cooler. So he was having a leak right there. Not really sure why he was taking this off unless 
it was building up so much pressure it was leaking possibly but this has got to come out and I'm gonna put the new unit in so let's take these out this banjo bolt up here is a little bit jacked up it looks like he used an open wrench and uh, I think I may have a new one uh, that was sent to me the used one that I purchased so I'm gonna take this off we also have one on the bottom down there all right to get the factory oil cooler off uh, once you have the lines undone there are three eight millimeter bolts there's the two bottom bolts are right here and one is right behind here so I'm gonna take those off and see if the cooler can come out without uh, disconnecting anything up here um, otherwise I may have to take one of these header uh, pipes off also I wanted to show you the design difference between the 07 and I think there's a 13 the factory banjo just allows fluid to pass through okay this one's a little bit jacked up the one from the 2013 the replacement that I purchased has a bleeder up at the top that's made out of brass um, so you can bleed the air out of the top of the cooler in case there is any oil or air in the oil there so that's pretty cool this is going to go up top here it looks a little you know vintagey because it's brass all right bolts are out and the cooler is stuck it does not uh, go around corners and i cannot finagle it to get it in even if i did and there was close tolerances i don't want to bend up the fins on the new one so i'm going to put some pb blaster on the header uh, bolts they're kind of rusty so once that is done, I can remove, I think it's uh, just one bolt right here, and then this entire pipe comes off. I'll work on that next. Also, there's a crossover pipe uh, that, with a little clamp down here. I'm not sure if I'll need to move that because once this is disconnected, I think I can pivot it a little bit. I don't know, we'll see. I've never taken one of these apart to this extent, so I'd really like to get this out so I can put the new one in. All right, well I knew it was gonna happen eventually, but uh, ran into a problem. You can see one of the header nuts came off fine. It's a little rough, but this other um, entire nut and bolt completely pulled out of the cylinder head. It's a little rusty, and I was luckily able to remove it. However, the crossover pipe has a bolt as well, which was really bad, and when I went to remove it, it completely broke. So now I gotta extract that bolt, which is very unfortunate. I was hoping to get a little bit further ahead before I had to deal with issues like this, but here we are. All right, so until I took this bottom clamp off, I didn't realize how bad that was. There's not even any threads left on that. So if I can't extract this properly, I'm gonna have to get a new clamp. I mean, that's really rough shape, and <laughs> it looks pretty crappy, so. That's where it snapped off. Turn it on that way. But now that that's finished, I can just get in here and remove the cooler. So all that work just to get that damaged part completely out and replaced. Wish me luck. I'm gonna put the new one in there and uh, see how it bolts up. All right, since I had the left header out, I decided to take the right one out as well. Check out all the valves and see what kind of shape the cylinder head's in. I just have to clean up all of this PV blaster off the cylinder head and clean this stuff in here a little bit while I have everything off. Also, in order to remove the pipe from this side, I had to completely disconnect and move the right rear set, which is a pain in the ass because there's bolts here and there's a pinch bolt here, and it's just in the way of everything. But I got it, and uh, damn, this thing is apart. Like, what the hell am I doing? And things just keep getting better. So the bolt that holds the exhaust on the right hand side decided, well, it was just gonna snap. So there's that. This entire thing from here in, all the threads are in there. And I'm gonna have to try to extract those um, out of there. Let's see if I can, they're all the way inside there. So that's gonna be fun. I tried to remove the rusty bolt out of the clamp and I put some pliers on there and it completely broke the nut where it was welded tack welded on there which is good I can just do a nut and bolt it doesn't have to be welded it'll just be a little bit of a pain in the ass to get that through but the clamp is good to go I can put that back on there and put a nut and bolt through here I'll use stainless this time and that'll be fixed up uh, 
uh, the mount on the left hand side is going to have to stay out until I get that extracted. I don't have time to do that right now. Plus, whenever I run the new canister, it'll be bolted onto here. So that really won't be an issue. Uh, however, I am going to extract that and fix that bolt. I'm going to go ahead and put the clamp on there, uh, get a nice bolt that fits in here, and then get this header bolt mounted and everything tightened up so I can get closer to firing it up. All right, I got a can of fuel here. I'm going to put a little bit in the fuel tank and see if she fires up. Cross her fingers. All right guys, moment of truth. A good sign. Maybe a reserve tank because it's so little fuel. couldn't get it to even fire up for a couple of seconds. I drained some of the old fuel out of the bottom of the carburetors and I removed the caps off of the intakes here and put some starting fluid in there. If it does fire up for a couple of seconds, that means that there, there is spark. However, fuel is not getting in there, which should be an easy fix. It's typically just a carb rebuild or a carb cleaning. So I think I'm going to put these caps back on and See if I can if I can fire the bike up. If it doesn't fire on, then we got some issues. I'm really disappointed that it didn't just start up, but that's how it goes, especially with stuff that's been sitting or messed with if you don't know what you're doing. So uh, the battery was dying pretty fast because I kept cranking it over and over again. So I'm going to give it a shot here. I've been charging it up for a few minutes. Hopefully it works. Cross your fingers. Hmm. That's bad. Well, that really blows. It appears that we have no spark. So I'm going to have to test a few components next time. And uh, I guess we'll continue in the next video.